um, when we had pendants to you know the Roma commission that was preferred and so now giving a lot more of the private uh, the public workers in Ghana if you go to days like Kendi you could see you know cottes what we call cottes that were built way back into the Gogo's regime where uh, you could see we had you know either semi detached or one bedroom two bedroom accommodation so in those days Ghanaians were not too much worried or did not find accommodation as a challenge and then from then we have been moving on and moving on and moving on and you can recall that in those days population of the country was not that huge today we have over 25 million Ghanaians but the housing gap is close to over 3 million and that is the problem a lot more Ghanaians do not have affordable accommodation when you talk about affordable where just an ordinary earning you know salary salary earner could afford either a two-bedroom or a one-bedroom house that is also not available in fact the issue to do with accommodation is becoming a canker for most Ghanaians in this country today we want to talk about how we can make life very bearable for every Ghanaian and we want to look at the, the housing sector because you know that if you if you wake up in the morning you wake up in a house when you're going to the office and it's late you want to come back to the house to sleep if you don't have anywhere to sleep your life is so miserable that sometimes you will regret that you ever ever have to come into this part of the world that is the discussion on bta the african business talk today and that is what i want you all to bridge yourself to understand what is going on in the housing sector and what is being done in the housing sector i mean i i, I can recall that most of you have heard that government is making some efforts to make sure that they provide affordable houses in the country on the flip side there are some real estate companies developers that are also providing what they in their term affordable houses for Ghanaians we we'll understand whether what they term affordable is indeed affordable for Ghanaians to stay in and what can we do um, in terms of technology you know to improve the housing um, units that we have and most importantly to make housing not a luxurious item but to become a necessity and become something that anybody who is gainfully employed can have we'll also be looking at the mortgage sector as well and we're looking deep into the auxiliaries the accessories you know because I, I i i want to believe that when we talk about housing or accommodation there are so many auxiliaries or accessories that that the components that come into play i mean if you look at cement for example which constitute one major ingredient one very major ingredient we are being challenged when it comes to pricing the price of that commodity is either quadrupled doubled or tripled in the past and it is having an effect on that industry if anybody who wants to build a house today needs to look for some extra money to be able to afford maybe a unit or two units bedroom for himself or for his family apart from cement you come 
to the other materials as well, the iron rods, the roofing sheets, and what even amazes me these days, and I'm sure for those of you who are watching us, is the wood factor, the wood factor of building today. Today, wood is becoming the most expensive, the most expensive commodity that you have to, you know, and, you know, get get yourself engaged or embrace yourself with when it comes to building the house. We'll be looking at all that in detail with our guest who will soon join us. Then we'll have the discussion. But before then, let's go take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll be looking deep into the housing sector in Ghana. Business Talk analyzes Africa's business development and how policies and initiatives affect the lives of the African. The talk aims at opening opportunities for industry as well as sound trade culture practices between business owners and entrepreneurs in continental Africa and in the diaspora. Don't miss it as we engage think tanks, businessmen and women, entrepreneurs, chief executives, innovators and people who have worked to transform countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia, Benin, Togo, South Africa, Botswana, Egypt and many other African economies. The African Business Talk live on Business Television Africa. The tourism industry in Ghana is reported to be the fourth highest foreign exchange earner on our GDP list. We will find out what the impact, the identification, development and promotion of tourist sites in the local vicinities where they are located. We also want to talk to the various chiefs and opinion leaders in these communities to assess whether tourism is making a positive or negative impact on the lives of the local people. This is Tourism TV fact-finding program that seeks to investigate the existing and potential Brand new Ralph Aito this and every Friday on this wonderful expedition to find out what tourism is all about in Ghana. On the mountain itself, uh, you will see the vegetation is very good, uh, and on top of the...
African Business Talk analyzes Africa's business development and how policies and initiatives affect the lives of the African. The talk aims at opening opportunities for industry as well as sound trade culture practices between business owners and entrepreneurs in continental Africa and in the diaspora. Don't miss it as we engage think tanks, businessmen and women, entrepreneurs, chief executives, innovators and people who have worked to transform countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia, Benin, Togo, South Africa, Botswana, Egypt and many other African economies. The African Business Talk. Welcome back um, to the African Business Talk right here on BTA. Today we'll be looking I mean, um, at the housing sector. And I'm sure that we all have one desire to own a house. Every young man, I mean, middle level income earner, um, even if you retire, your desire is to, is to, is to, is to have a house. Is to have a house. Sometimes people, people think that having a house has to be that big thing. No, just having a bathroom, a kitchenette, you know, a, a, one bedroom if you have a small family, just one bedroom or two bedrooms, you know, a living hall, you know, something small. But what we are experiencing in this country of ours today makes it seemingly difficult for most Ghanaians, if not all Ghanaians, but most Ghanaians to have an affordable, affordable house to live in. Affordable house will be very difficult for most Ghanaians. Why am I saying this? If you look at the macroeconomic environment of Ghana today, it predetermines or it, it gives a clear in, in indication. But for some or so many Ghanaians, their salaries can't not allow them to be able to f afford a house. Because, one, the rate of depreciation of the city against the dollar is one key factor. If you listen carefully as to why or the reason why the cement producers in this country increased the price of cement in this country was as a result of the fact that the rate of the position of the Ghanaian city against some some other currencies is not performing very well the Ghanaian city is depreciating at a faster rate today and therefore since some of the components or the ingredients that they use to produce a product like cement is imported they are forced to also adjust their prices and look at the rate of differentials. The difference between the old price and the new price is very huge. So therefore, if somebody has planned to, you know, um, save a little bit of money to be able to build a house, that person can't build a house now. Because if you go take that investment and say, I am going to use it, to build a house you can't build that house because the price of cement has gone up has gone up so what you need to do is that you need to keep your investment still running because the purpose in which you have you know the, your, your investment um, and, um, objective will not be achieved because the prices of that commodity has gone up that is what is happening that is a very dangerous thing and that is not an acceptable thing for people who are crying to have some level of decent accommodation in the country. 
Now, it does not affect only cement only. If you look at the price of iron rods, if you look at the price of roofing sheets, if you look at the price of nails, if you look at the price of paint, if you look at the price of electrical wiring, today, today, most people who are building or have had a budget to build a house will have to now realign or reconsider their budget because the prices of those commodities have shot up, shot up by, by almost about 50%, 50% in the market. So if you want to build a house, do you think you can build a house today? That is the big question that we want to talk about. We invited um, ASN Properties um, today to join us to have this discussion. Unfortunately, um, they are not in, but we'll still go ahead and then just tease ourselves a little bit. Tease ourselves a little bit as to what is happening in the housing industry. Now, you know, one interesting thing that I'm sure, apart from what you need um, to build a house, the raw materials, or the, 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 the iron rods and the cement and, and all those things that you need to build a house, there's one thing that you need to get first of all before you build the house. And trust me, it is not coming cheap these days. And we all know what I'm talking about. The issue to do with land. The issue to do with land acquisition. The processes that one has to go through to, to, line, to, to give permits. But before we even come to permits, let us talk about getting the land itself. It, it, it will amaze you, and it is very important to note that today if you go get a land and you do not check double check triple check quadruple check the rightful owners of the land you'll be paying monies to people who are so unscrupulous and who will take who who are ready to take advantage of the system and dupe you of money because we've had instances where you buy this piece of land they'll give you all the documents the search they'll tell you that everything has been done the baby prepare an indenture for you you go and then you go and investigate at the land commission and even the processes that when you go to the land commission the stress that you have to go through is one other thing but you go there and you want to go and check what, whether, you know, the, 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 the land indeed belongs to the rightful owner or the, the, the person that is making that transfer or selling that land to you. You will go through a lot of challenges. Why should we do that? Why should we go through that challenge? You know, so, so it's, it's something that really is worrisome. Because you spend money, you buy the land, and then you let them get to know that the land does not belong to the rightful owner that is pretending or has pretended to be the rightful owner of the land and is selling the land to you. And after selling the land to you, and to even to reclaim your money, after you've paid the money to the person, even the process or the hustle you go through to get your money back from that individual, you have to go through a lot. So we need to be careful. We need to be careful. We need to understand the procedures pro properly so that when you are acquiring a land, because today, if you open our radio stations, if you, open, if you, if you watch television, there are a lot of property owners, you know, trumpeting their land for sale giving you mud watering offers you need to be very careful and that is what the african business talk will engage a lot more people and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot more experts 
to be able to help you to understand the procedures that you need to go through before you, 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 you pay you pay for the land that you believe that is yours we'd like to go for a short commercial break when we come back we'll continue with the subject African Business Talk analyzes Africa's business development and how policies and initiatives affect the lives of the African the talk aims at opening opportunities for industry as well as sound trade culture practices between business owners and entrepreneurs in continental Africa and in the diaspora. Don't miss it as we engage think tanks, businessmen and women, entrepreneurs, chief executives, innovators and people who have worked to transform countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia, Benin, Togo, South Africa, Botswana, Egypt, and many other African economies. The African Business Talk, live on Business Television Africa. The tourism industry in Ghana is reported to be the fourth highest foreign exchange earner on our GDP list. We will find out what the impact, the identification, development and promotion of tourist sites in the local vicinities where they are located. We also want to talk to the various chiefs and opinion leaders in these communities to assess whether tourism is making a positive or negative impact on the lives of the local people. This is Tourism TV fact-finding program that seeks to investigate the existing and potential tourist sites. Join me, Ralph Aike, this and every Friday on this wonderful expedition to find out what tourism is all about in Ghana. On the mountain itself, uh, you will see the vegetation is very good uh, and on top of the... successful people in Ghana today than before? Well, that is the truth and the secret is imprudent financial planning with the right financial manager. You need to know the right fund manager who spends your money 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 4 weeks in a month and 12 months in a year. That manager is at Gold Coast Fund Management. At Gold Coast, your money never sleeps. It revolves every second to give you more money for use when you really need it. For the past 21 years, Gold Coast Fund Management has had a strong reputation of spinning people's money to beat inflation, depreciation, and treasure bill rates. Put your money to work. Move from savings to investment. Pay your investment tight into the gold fund and gold money market fund and be assured that when you are in need 
you can tend to them to resolve your financial problems. Gold Coast Fund Management. Investment advice worth its weight in gold. The African Business Talk analyzes Africa's business development and how policies and initiatives affect the lives of the African. The talk aims at opening opportunities for industry as well as sound trade culture practices between business owners and entrepreneurs in continental Africa and in the diaspora. Don't miss it as we engage think tanks, businessmen and women entrepreneurs, chief executives, innovators, and people who have worked to transform countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia, Benin, Togo, South Africa, Botswana, Egypt, and many other African economies. The African Business Talk, live on Business Television Africa. The tourism industry in Ghana is reported to be the fourth highest foreign exchange earner on our GDP list. We will find out what the impact, the identification, development and promotion of tourist sites in the local vicinities where they are located. We also want to talk to the various chiefs and opinion leaders in these communities to assess whether tourism is making a positive or negative impact on the lives of the local people. This is Tourism TV fact-finding program that seeks to investigate the existing and potential Join me, Ralph Aite, this and every Friday on this wonderful expedition to find out what tourism is all about in Ghana. On the mountain itself, uh, you will see the vegetation is very good uh, and on top of the... Africa's business development and how policies and initiatives affect the lives of the African. The talk aims at opening opportunities for industry as well as sound trade culture practices between business owners and entrepreneurs in continental Africa and in the diaspora. 
don't miss it as we engage think tanks. You welcome back to the African Business Talk um, today. Um, BTA is talking about the housing industry. Uh, it's interesting how people uh, perceive the housing industry. They they see it to be one industry that is capital intensive, and you know perhaps they do not want to enter it. But we've had a lot of um, you know. Um, very good houses springing up in the country, but our concern basically is the house that will house a house <laughs> that will house um, the ordinary um, Ghanaian. And we've been taking a look at some of the uh, of, 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 of the, um, the 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 items that you might be needing to be able to put up a, a, a one-unit block or two-unit block. For a very small family and we've been talking about how the prices of these commodities are escalating in, in in the market and it's a lot more people have raised concern that they have made investments to be able to build maybe a one unit house or two unit house but looking at how the macro economy is is is, is moving now um, looking at the rate of the position of the city um, they can't they can't make it and that is a difficulty a lot more of the people uh, are going to face I, I earlier said that we were expecting um, ASN properties to join us so that we could be looking at the housing industry unfortunately uh, uh, they did not make it but I have mine with me my old good buddy um, um, who I believe is also uh, who has a house <laughs> I believe maybe we'll, we'll have to look at how um, he was able to, to, to get it. I mean, the, the, w w we really wanted to talk about, we have been talking about, indeed, how you've been acquired the land. Now, after acquiring the land, the procedure that you need to go through for registering the land, and sometimes people take advantage of us, and then they take our money away. That is very bad. I mean, the, the Land Commission or the, 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 the Ministry of Land Resources, they should look at the procedure carefully. And then uh, the chiefs within the communities should also help one way or the other to be able to have, you know, a risk-free process in terms of acquiring land. Because a lot more people are, are, are being um, pilfered of their money. But quickly, if you look into Ghana now, it's quite exciting. People can't own houses. Yeah, it's become, a, it's become a big challenge. Uh, funny how you were talking about My experience is strictly as a consumer, as a, as a, a layman out there who has gone through the system the hard way. And you know, it, it's very humbling um, going through getting land and, and making sure it's guarded, making sure you go through the right paperwork to take the land to even begin to build. Um, mm. Fortunately for me, and I thought it was unfortunate when I got it, the land I bought was back in the 90s and it was not around where. Now, um, Koko, I guess you, you, we have a sound problem. Um, I, I, I will let my technician take care of the sound problem, so we go for a short commercial break. Um, when, 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 if technicians are ready, we will then sort out Koko's um, microphone um, sound problems, and then we'll come back after just a minute or two uh, break, so we can sort out the sound problem. We'll be back. The African Business Talk analyzes Africa's business development and how policies and initiatives affect the lives of the African. The talk aims at opening opportunities for industry as well as sound trade culture practices between business owners and entrepreneurs in continental Africa and in the diaspora. Don't miss it as we engage think tanks, businessmen and women entrepreneurs, chief executives, innovators, and people who have worked to transform countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia, Benin, Togo, South Africa, Botswana, Egypt, and many other African economies. The African Business Talk, live on Business Television Africa.
Africa is becoming more populous and richer. It has experienced unprecedented and uninterrupted economic growth for the past three decades. But if African countries are to become economically successful, their governments will have to implement adequate policies which contribute to the expansion of the private sector, job creation, and an increase in the productivity levels. Corruption must be dealt with in Africa. Unemployment, mainly among the youth, is another challenge facing African leaders. These and many more issues that hinders our growth will be discussed on the banner and provide the why, how, and what to accelerate the continent's dream of economic freedom. Watch on the banner every Saturday is going to be hot, heated, but focused. Africa's future success will depend on stability, sound policies, and solid institutions. Don't miss this. The African Business Talk analyzes Africa's business development and how policies and initiatives affect the lives of the African. The talk aims at opening opportunities for industry as well as sound trade culture practices between business owners and entrepreneurs in continental Africa and in the diaspora. Don't miss it as we engage think tanks, businessmen and women entrepreneurs, chief executives, innovators, and people who have worked to transform countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia, Benin, Togo, South Africa, Botswana, Egypt, and many other African economies. The African Business Talk, live on Business Television Africa. Welcome back to the African Business Talk right here on BTA. We'll be talking, uh, we'll be talking about the housing industry in Ghana. Um, we're looking at some of the challenges that we've been going through early on. We, we talked about um, an invitation that was sent to SESN properties. Um, unfortunately, they've not, they were not able to make it. Um, I have with me my good buddy, Koko Fridriajman, who is helping us. I mean, he, he, I'm sure he owns a house, so um, he can also share in his experience as to how the hustle he went through um, to be able to acquire um, a place to put his head. Um, a shelter over, over, over his family. Koku, I mean, it's, 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 it's strenuous. Even to, even to rent a house in the country, it's not easy. I, I know of a couple that just came into Ghana and are looking for an accommodation. And it's not that easy. For about three, two months, they are not getting a decent, I mean, where a decent and affordable accommodation now and it's 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 a problem for rental property for rental property yeah and it becomes a culture shock especially when you you lived elsewhere um and you're coming back home uh, besides the fact that they're demanding um for an exchange which yeah dollars i mean that that's an issue that is it's i think it's it's a non-starter they, they they ask you for a year or two or sometimes even five years in advance if you have that kind of money, why would you go and rent Why do you house? want to go and rent a house? Why don't you start to build your own house? Build one. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that in itself is an issue. It's a big issue. Uh, and, and, and something has to be done about that. No, no, but I mean, are we not the cause of that? Because are the laws, I mean, I, could, I can see that the laws are so relaxed in by, this by country. You we, are you talking about policies? As I mean, yes, as, as government, as people. as people of Ghana, because if, it, if, I, if I go to you, the landlord, and you tell me that I should pay five years advance, I'll just refer you to the law that says that, no, I'm not supposed to pay five years advance. But of course, you know, the thing is that demand and supply puts comes in here, where, 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 where the demand outstrips supply. So therefore, you, 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 will not, you will not even think about it. The fact that you've gotten one, you hurriedly want to go and pay before the next yeah, person I mean, comes in to take it. As you say, demand and supply from a, from a landlord, as mm -hmm. long as there's demand, I will be putting it out there, and I will put it out there for the biggest bang for my buck, so to speak. Mm. If somebody's offering me five years of big money, I will take that money. As long as there's no laws binding me, I can do it and get away with it. Why not? So I'm thinking, I'm not sure whether there are laws against that. They, they, they are. They well, are. If they are, no. then they need to be enforced. It's, it's not enforced. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, certainly it's, it's, it's not enforced. But you know, because there's another thing that bothers me. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, we were expecting someone, uh, an expert, to join us to discuss the subject. Unfortunately, uh, the ASN representative did not did not show up. But um, I mean, 
there is this thing that bothers me a lot. I think the, the, if you look at the real estate um, the, the developers, I mean the property developers, they are developing middle to upper class houses. If you look at what is springing up in Accra, all over Accra, I mean, how many people in Accra can afford that? Then again, I guess the minor supply comes in. If the demand was not there, I'm sure they would not be springing it up. But I've, I've taken a tour. I mean, will you, will you, I mean, go, go, will you, should you be listening to How many people in Ghana can well, afford a place like that? I, I can't, so I'm not going to even go look at it. But evidently, there are people that are taking it. We have expats and, and uh, companies that have come from abroad who brings people in, and they are paying big money for but it. But if you look at, if you look at the equation or the ratio as to the people, the demand, the, the, the higher demand, or the category of people that demand higher in terms of uh, the accommodation issues at the lower seemingly middle income earners. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so why are we not targeting that sector? I mean, that, that bracket, you know. Personally, it would be a question for the government. And I'm with you on that. I mean, I'm thinking housing is great, but if you look at our infrastructure, i.e., our roads, our sewage systems, mm -hmm. they're all bad. You, you see all these nice big buildings. Can you imagine that? You cannot drive <laughs> a nice car to your nice home. Uh -huh. I mean, w what is that? Mm. In other places, they put all these things, it's laid out and mm. done before the house even goes up. Mm. So once the houses go up, you have a complete neighborhood. Mm. You have nice roads. You have even secure areas. The roads are planned properly where um, security-wise, if somebody comes in there to try to take something, mm -hmm. well, maybe one exit. Mm. All, all of that comes into play. Mm. But it seems like we have a challenge when it comes to that. Mm. I don't know whether we have zoning rules. Uh, have you have you heard about the rates that are running around these days in terms of the the, the house the pricing? Yeah, very outrageous, and they're all in Dallas. Uh, I, I know about real estate a little bit, but not in this country. Mm. And, and I'm thinking a lot of these houses are overpriced. But like I said, we don't have any roads to get there. We don't have good sewage systems to get there. We don't have good running water, consistent running water. We don't have consistent electricity, mm -hmm. as, you, as you can tell. Mm -hmm. But we have all these outrageous prices. So what is the basis of that? There has to be demand somewhere. There has to be getting the money from somewhere mm. for them to keep putting those houses. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's the cost of capital. I mean, over here um, in Ghana, if you're trying to start a business like that, to move into the real estate uh, business and you go to the bank to borrow uh, money um, for long term, um, the rate seems not to be quite attractive to right. enough. And then um, the, even the mortgage rates, the mortgage premium that we pay here in Ghana is also very high. I mean, and, and one of the key things, I, when I started the show, I was talking about the rate of depreciation of the city to, to its other foreign currencies. And you see that, in fact, it is, it is rather the macroeconomic instability that is jarring into this, this sector into trouble. The rate is unprecedented, so to speak. <laughs> the rate of the city is dipping, I can't begin to say. One other thing that I see driving this thing is, mm. if you look at trying to acquire land mm. to start a process of even building, mm -hmm. All the hassle that you have to go I through. talked about it. I talked about it. It's insane. So, and I know there are a lot of people who are thinking, no, I'm just going to get something that's built already. That's hassle-free. Mm. I don't have to worry about land gas. I don't mm. have to worry about somebody selling the land twice or three mm. times mm. and just be done with it. Mm. And all those things are some things that I'm sure we need to look at as a country. But, you know, it's, it's quite interesting that um, we're still looking at, you know, the, the demand for the housing government seems not to be... Well, I've heard a couple of things that they, they want to do. I mean, government, but can't it can't it be one of the, you know, key key uh, priorities of government to provide affordable uh, housing for for its people? And and then you know, I also want to top it up that question because it's a discussion. I mean, I, look, I, I I see that look, we should develop the technology to be able to apply, you know, latest technology because I've seen some houses. That are being, being built externally with little, little, little. They're going you know, up fast and they're going up tall. And then we have incidences like what happened in Malcolm. We got, we got keep the souls of people who lost their lives. Mm. It looks like every time you turn around, there's a building coming up. Mm. I'm not saying it's all bad. I've seen them some pretty good buildings being built. I mean, I see them go up. But my limited experience of building, I see the iron bars that go in, I see the concrete that goes in. 
But there are also some pillows that look flimsy. You look like the pillows look like this, and this will, mm. will fall mm. if there should be an earthquake in Accra, mm. for example. Mm. A little tremor, this building will collapse. Mm. One of the examples is the Malcolm building. Mm. And buildings that look like that one, I see in some other places. And those are all things that, for safety reasons, mm. As a country, when you look at that, mm -hmm. uh, well, it's 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 um, viewers. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you heard the sound of a, a huge aircraft blast above our heads. Uh, we're producing this this close to the flight zone of most aircraft. So uh, I'm sorry, uh, we are not within a very <laughs> uh, insecure place. We are just uh, at a place where um, we, the, the flights will be definitely be flying above our heads. But um, Koku, it's 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 interesting. I mean what you just said, but um, I think that we should look at it from an, an angle where um, if we can use local technology, I mean, clay has been one technology that if you go down to our homes back in the village. I, I hope you're not going towards us living back in huts anymore. <laughs> oh, no, 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 but I mean, why can't we develop it? I mean, we have CSR, we have all these research institutions yeah. there. I mean, we, we, what we can do I'm looking at what we can do is that we develop the clay that we have, okay? Because this clay, and right behind me, is is, is is a brick, is a brick we can use to build. But have we made it more cheaper so we can use local material, well, you know, you know to, to build to build houses? The cost of putting up a building these days are not coming cheap. I mean, uh, the price of cement, for example. Ah, we talked about it initially. I mean, if you hear the prices, it's about thirty-eight to forty CDs. Yes. I mean, how many of those can you get to build up to put up a three-bedroom house, as opposed to other technologies like prefab? Mm. That um, in countries like in the United States, for mm. example, you see nice-looking buildings and everything there is not concrete; it's prefab, and then you have your drywall put inside, beautifully done. I mean, you put paint on it, nicely done. In, mm. the, in the summertime, it keeps you cool when you mm. have. Mm. Insulation is mm. properly done. Mm. In the winter time, it keeps the heat in. I mm. mean, why can't we do that here? Mm. It will even make maintenance cheaper mm. and easier to do. Mm. Look at all the buildings we have around town that are old, big mostly, and look at the way it's maintained. Even the cost to maintain it is outrageous. And look at what we have. We, we, it's, it looks like we are continuing the same trend. So, in the next 30, 40, 50 years, these buildings will be standing there. The owners probably would have passed on. Um, ownership, maybe we have a family dispute going on, mm. and they will be sitting there looking all tacky. And what does it do for the beautification of our, of our city? Of our city, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there, I, 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 I can't imagine this, but there's a lot of challenges, there's a lot of problems, there's a lot of things that we need to do as a country, as an individual, as a nation, as a government. I mean, we, we have a long way to go, and one of the areas that need attention, most importantly, and that's given a lot of priority, is the housing sector. Because I, I have lived in Takradi most of my life, and when I, was grow, when I was growing up, I mean, if you go to a place like Takradi, you see buildings that, you know, three, four, five, that we call the story building, you know, four, five, six, mostly in Takradi. And one of the reasons when I inquired was for the fact that um, cement was first produced in Takradi. So cement was quite cheaper at that time okay. in Takradi. So a lot more people could afford it. And, you know, it's, 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 it was good because just a small piece of land, 80 by 100 or 100 by 100, you could build a five-story building, which would accommodate several families today what we see is not exciting you want to own your small eight by hundred accommodation have only your wife and your kids stay in whereas in europe or somewhere in america where you can have you know sky sky high buildings that will accommodate hundreds of people we should learn from that i mean our leaders travel a lot they go and see all these technology that are springing up in, 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 in most developed countries, but we do not see them yet. You know, that is the thing that the African business talk who want to emphasize, that we have come to that stage, or we've come to that time of age where we should be applying 
the best practice in terms of technology, in terms of knowledge base. We need to upgrade ourselves so well that today people can have affordable, affordable houses to live in. And then when they can, and I mean, you know, it's it's exciting. I mean, it looks like this problem has been there since, and there seem not to be any solution because we talk about affordable housing. We talk about even now, electricity for even for the housing is becoming a problem. If you got a house, you need to pay so much money to get electricity to your house. But Ghana is so blessed with a lot of sun, so sun, sun rays. Power. So solar power. So what are we yeah, talking about? The, the, what are I mean, we doing beyond, about these things? Beyond the government having policies in place where these things will look attractive, I think we, the consumers, too, we need to get with the times. But we have times and seasons. Mm. Um, in the past, everybody wanted a big house. Mm. You wanted the biggest house on the block. Everybody talking about you living in a big house. Let's say your family, in a family of four, yourself, your wife, and maybe your children. The children grow up. They go away. Then it becomes just you. Mm. Now the maintenance becomes an issue. Yeah. Sweeping up the house becomes an issue. Uh, now you need help doing all of that. Mm. And we know the problems that can bring about all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Kuku Fridia, for having me on the show. I mean, uh, you came in at the right time to, to, to for us to look at this 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 sector. We'll be looking at it again. Uh, we will have an expect from the sector um, to come in.